Hey y'all, Tham141 here, and I am in our pantry. I am in the apothecary area that we have set aside. Now, for those of you who don't know, apothecary is just an herbal remedy shop. Uh, it's what pharmacy used to be before there were Greek words like pharmakia. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're doing right now. And I'm going to show you a little bit of what we got. Now, we just started really getting into the herbalism last summer. And last fall, we started working on getting stores up. And we didn't get all that great of stores up. Now, here... We have, oh, my favorite, vanilla extract. Oh, it's good. Oh, that's some good stuff there. Uh, now, what you do, with the, to, you take the vanilla beans and you just cover them in vodka, uh, 80 proof vodka. And every once in a while you come in and you stir it. Ah, oh, that smells good, I'm sure. Okay. Um, here we have an echinacea tincture, um, that we made. Got some sediment in there. You want to mix it all up before you put it in your eyedropper to use. Uh, and we write right on it what it is good for. Echinacea tincture, the date, December 2nd, 20th. Colds, flu, it's an antibiotic, antibacteria. Take at first sign of cold or flu, okay? And this will cut down the amount of suffering you do with flu or any other upper respiratory uh, problem. It also very good for urinary tract infections. Uh, let's see, goldenrod tincture. Everybody thinks, oh, I'm allergic to goldenrod. Chances are you're not allergic to goldenrod. You're allergic to ragweed, which grows under goldenrod and comes to blossom about the same time. The reason I say this is because goldenrod, the pollen is so heavy that it doesn't get very far from the plant. Whereas the ragweed gets in the air and in everybody's sinuses, they look around, they see the goldenrod blossoming. Now, some people are very allergic to goldenrod. Be careful when you start getting into herbalism. You can hurt yourself very badly uh, with this. Um, my mom, I wanted, before I would give her any goldenrod, she said, I'm allergic to goldenrod. And I said, ah, I think you're allergic to ragweed. Well, I picked a blossom of goldenrod. I got within three feet of her behind her, and she turned around, and her nose was running, and her eyes were watering. Okay, you don't want to uh, take this if you're allergic to it. But again, it is just an infusion into 80% alcohol, which makes it a, a tincture and will keep it for years. We'll preserve it. Now, fire cider is a little different. We got a little bit of fire cider here that wouldn't fit in the jar. We strained this on the 27th of October. You take one teaspoon three to four times a day for colds or flu. Gee, I wonder why we were so, con so concerned about getting the cold or the flu hmm. in 2020. Um, here we have comfrey uh, oil that we bought from Mountain Rose Herbs. Because if you can't grow it, buy it until you can grow it. Cherry bark tincture. I make with the cherry bark tincture. Now this is a tincture, 80 proof vodka on cherry bark. New, um, you take the new branches and you peel the bark off them. You want the cambium layer. Um, that's the green layer inside the bark. And in fact, I got some right here, cherry bark tincture. And that, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, that's just vodka over the cherry bark. Okay, and that vodka is the solvent. It will absorb the properties of that cherry bark. 
Now you mix one part of this mixed with two parts of elderberries that we got from Mountain Rose Herbs that have been soaked for a couple weeks in a warm area or the sun with in glycerin, vegetable glycerin. And you mix in one part of cherry bark tincture with that and you have a cough syrup that is awesome for sore throats and all sorts of other stuff. Now guys, I'm not a doctor. I am not prescribing anything. I'm just saying this stuff works for us. We haven't died yet, praise God. Um, that's whole elderberries that we bought dried. Um, some of this stuff, okay, this is cleaver's oil that we were given and we put it in an eyedropper. Now for tinctures, all I'm taking of, say, um, the uh, goldenrod tincture, when my nose is running and I have my sinuses are all congested, I'll take uh, an eyedropper full of it and I will put three or four drops under my tongue, depending on how severe it is. Hold it there for about 10, 20 seconds and blow my nose. After I blow my nose, I usually find my nose starts opening right up. This is oregano. Oregano, an antibacterial, it fights infection, prevents cell damage, and it's loaded with vitamins. Who knew? So that's medicinal as well as flavorful. Parsley, if you can grow anything, you can grow parsley. Uh, it's good for a seasoning and garnish, fresh breath, fresh breath, fluid retention, hay fever, diabetes. It's an anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal, blood purifier, anti-anemic, constipation, diarrhea, and it's an immune booster. Parsley. Wow. Ain't that something? Parsley is an immune booster. We also have thyme and rose hips up here. Um, that's the cleaver's oil. Now, we didn't have any comfrey leaf. This is in case we run out of the um, comfrey oil. Um, cause we use that along with camphor oil in Wendy's magical pain relieving cream. And I will link right up here. Uh, I'll put a link to that video. Um, man, you get that stuff on your hands and it is awesome. Okay. So that's the elderberries. Here we go again. All right. Now, Ooh. Lost the vacuum seal on that. The spearmint. Oh, the spearmint. I'm going to take a little. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Spearmint. We dry all of our herbs ourselves. We have heal all or self heal as it's called. It grows wild in our yard. A lot of these things people consider weeds like dandelion. Plantain. This is the little cobs that grow in the fall on the plantain, the broadleaf and the uh, narrow leaf plantain that are full of the seeds. Okay, now those seeds are a laxative. They taste like corn. They are a mild laxative. That's good to have. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, self self heal bud for tea um, strawberry leaves didn't ever think about picking your strawberry leaves it's an astringent okay that means that it's going to help dry up the chest um, 
can't read my own writing. It causes contraction of the cells and tissues. That's astringent. It'll open up your airways. It's good for digestion, arthritis, uh, arthritis symptoms. Blood, it's a blood purifier, anti-inflammatory, and may lower blood pressure. Strawberry leaves. Throw some of this in your tea, man. When you're mixing up your teas and stuff, not the laxative part of the plantain. Uh, that, that Now, these are plantain wounds, uh, plantain leaves. These are plantain leaves, and what they do is they're an antimicrobial, antibiotic. They're good for cough, wounds, inflamed skin, insect bites, stings, wounds, and cuts. There's a story of a gentleman cut his leg with a chainsaw. Horrible thing to do. But he cut his leg with a chainsaw and uh, he grabbed some plantain leaves, macerated them up in his hands, and stuffed the wound with the plantain leaves. Goes to the hospital. Before he goes into the emergency room, he pulls all that out and cleans, you know, he pulls all the leaves and stuff out. The doctor asked him which nurse cleaned the wound, and he says, no nurses cleaned the wound yet. You're the first person to look at it. And he said, that's the cleanest wound I've ever seen. It cleaned it out, helped stop, that's plantain. Um, red clover blossoms. Yep, red clover blossoms. Lemon balm, good for all sorts of stuff that ails you. Catnip, a catnip tea is a mild sedative. It's mild enough you can give catnip tea to children who won't go to sleep on their own. Lavender is good for anxiety, stress, insomnia, depression, dementia, and pain after surgery. Lavender. Huh. And you can grow this and collect it yourself. Make sure you know what you're collecting and you know what you're doing. I will put a link to the books, uh, a non-affiliate link. I'm not affiliated with Amazon yet, but to get uh, the books on the backyard medicinals and such. Birch leaves. I did not write what birch leaves are good for but they're good for a lot basil blackberry leaves bramble bramble leaf tea is awesome it is anti-inflammatory it is an immune booster it's good for sore throats mouth sores wounds topically used hemorrhoids topically used and diarrhea. The tea can be used internally or topically. You decide. Uh, here's a seasonal sampler of tea that we bought. Um, we have, let's see if I can, uh, pan down a little more. We have rubbed sage, whole rosemary, goldenrod. There's one thing it's easy to identify, it's goldenrod. And we make the tincture, I, I've been through that already. Then, ow, then I will show you. We have a little glycerin. We're going to get bigger things of glycerin. Peptabismol, Wendy's Miracle Pain Cream, um, our strips for testing, our strips for testing our apple cider vinegar. I will link up here to the apple cider vinegar video. Alcohol, anti itch cream, mucus relief eye drops that's and that guys is basically this part of our apothecary okay i'm saying this part because 
our apothecary is as broad as our yard. We have bone set that I have identified out here. We have um, mullen, all, all sorts of stuff. Learn this stuff. I'm going to be making a video of why we are off grid. Uh, I have not made it yet, so I can't link to it anywhere. But to where, why, why, to why we are off grid. Why is that even important? Well, because there are reasons for choosing the off grid, self sufficient lifestyle. Um, very important reasons. Very important reasons I would suggest to you to do it. And having an apothecary, okay, is one of those things. It's part of being self-sufficient. Being able to heal yourself when you need it, or your family, or your friends. Guys, not everybody has health insurance. Dandelion greens are free. If you don't spray them with a bunch of poison. Um, all right, guys. Anyway, that's me, and that's our apothecary. So, y'all have a good day. Stay healthy. Stay active. And be self-sufficient. Have a great day. This is T Ham 141. I'm out.